Well, good, good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back. And a few days ago, I decided we needed a little Christmas. Today, I think we need a little Art Deco. Some of these you've seen before, but most of these items I just acquired within the last year, or at least all during the, the two years of the pandemic. And I want to just talk a little bit about some of them today. This is just a small representation. I've got hundreds of items, really, uh, from this era. And anything from dime store items that could have been purchased for a few cents in any small hometown across this country, uh, as well as imported goods that would have been bought uh, or sold rather very expensively in some of the fine department stores of the days gone by. Let's zoom on down the line here. And of course, we have to have today's cup of coffee. We'll skip the coffee dancing man. He's a little annoyed because it's raining outside. <laughs> Should be annoyed at rain. Not really. Uh, we hit, ooh, I think we hit, uh, I think we hit 71 degrees yesterday. And then it's back in the 50s. So the blaze of sunlight I thought I was going to have on this windowsill we don't quite have today, but that's all right. Anchor Hocking made the Manhattan pattern, a beautiful deco pattern from the 30s. You see there's a little steam coming off that coffee. And you want to watch out because it was reproduced in the 1990s. And the pattern at that time was called Park Avenue. There are some changes, and if you really want the 1930s um, glass, get yourself a good uh, reference book, a good um, depression glass reference book, and they'll tell you how to spot the differences between the Manhattan and the Park Avenue. Okay, let me have a sip. You have a sip. That was delicious. I really do want to eat my pretzel treat, but if I do, I'll end up smacking my lips, so we'll just wait until the video is over. Absolutely, last summer, and you haven't seen this yet, I don't believe, I picked up this wonderful radio. I paid $100 for it in this condition. It would sell for about $200. Uh, once restored, it would sell for maybe three. Now, when I say in this condition, the cabinet is in lovely shape. It's a walnut cabinet, and this radio dates to 1931. Somebody splashed a little something here. I've got to doctor up those two spots, but other than that, we have a beautiful cabinet. Zoom in on the brass escutcheon plate here, which is a wonderful Art Deco design. This was brand new to us Americans. We Americans, us Americans. Uh, in 1931 this style and this is a Dewald radio the uh, gentleman who produced this was Donald Wald okay D Wald and this is called the Pierce Arrow which was what he named was the the line of the sets and so it's a wonderful uh, set with an electrodynamic speaker this is great circuitry for 1930 and we just turn it on and then we have uh, volume control and we have the tiny little dial right here but what's great about it is this fantastic art deco grill and this would be called uh, not a cathedral radio not really even a tombstone those are the terms usually applied but this comes up to a little bit of a point so you can't sit anything on top of it and you know, we love putting pictures and lamps and things on top of our radios. So 1931, I have to go through the whole thing and check the capacitors and all that stuff. But right now, that's about the condition that we've got there. Un untouched, unmonkeyed with. I'll be working on that some other time. And then over here is, we can see what the temperature is. And this is an American made desk thermometer. We have Bakelite and Chrome, which would have been very stylish and new in the 1930s. Uh, this is an American-made, probably just a thermometer for a desk. 
desktop and it works beautifully. On top, it is sitting on top of, I know I've shown you this before, uh, a wonderful Theta radio. And by the way, the DeWald company also made wonderful Catalan radios that have a great deal of value these days. Catalan is sort of, is a, is a synthetic plastic like Bakelite. But here in the mottled brown color is this wonderful Deco Theta. I did replace the grill cloth, which was tattered and torn. And this one also needs uh, electrical restoration. They all do old radios always. If you get one, don't plug it in. Uh, if you have any hopes in having it restored, take it to somebody who will put it on a, on a uh, um, who will bring it up slowly and do the work on it to get it restored properly. Okay, so that's a beautiful Bakelite cabinet with no cracks. If you're looking for old radios, check the cabinets because they crack very easily. Uh, next to it is something I know you've seen. Uh, this We talk about radio lamps. That's what this is here. It's a small lamp, which would, and they were sold in the early 30s. And uh, they were actually referred to as radio lamps and other novelty lamps. Just to sit on top of a radio give you a little bit of ambient light. We've got it lit right now. It has a crackle amber shade. That's the actual, that's the original shade on it. And it's a gilded metal there. Uh, not ormolu. It's a pot metal with a gold wash over top of it. So that's very nice from the 1930s as well. Or late 20s actually that piece. And then I have this wonderful Art Deco set that so that I've been showing you a couple of cups and saucers. Now this came last summer, the summer, yeah, last summer from a flea market. And I couldn't believe it when I, you know, it's one of those flea markets where you go and they have cardboard boxes all over the floor and everything is just thrown in it. Well, thrown in it was this set. Unreal. There's not a chip or a crack on any of it. Now, I am missing two cups. We've got six saucers and we've only got four cups and I'm using the leftover saucers really as underplates for the cream and sugar. So coffee pot, cream and sugar, four cups and saucers. If we turn it upside down and we take a look at the mark, we're going to see a lot. First thing we see is decor, and then f and then the word uh, fine silver. Now this is all German, and of course we can see made in Germany. Uh, R W stands for Rudolf Wachter. Now Rudolf Wachter was a was a, a well was born in I guess it would have been Bavaria at that time. He was a porcelain decorator and then moved from place to place, had a company and they started making this ware here in 1927. Now this is a silver overlay. They perfected this and the silver wash, this matte silver overlay was put onto the porcelain pieces and then it was refired. And after it was refired, uh, it was all hand polished and these items were uh, exported. A lot of it came to America, some of it came to Italy and this was this was shocking. You know, think of the, th the little dainty little tr English transferware type cups and saucers we were using in 1927 and then this comes out. This is early deco and this would have been uh, as I said, just a lot of folks would not have, they would have looked at this and said, oh my goodness, what, what on earth is this modern design? And there, were a, there was a lot of discussion in, the, in articles back in those days about modern design. But this did come into America in the late 1920s, sometimes at, sometime after 1927. And it's green with the silver overlay on it. 
and I'm thrilled to own it. I'm going to be looking around to try to get another two uh, saucer cups to complete the collection. American made Art Deco. This is cheap uh, depression glass. This is the Hazel Atlas pattern uh, called um, Modern Tone. And it has stepped design. I keep, I keep getting up and down. And so the stepped design on these salt and pepper shakers, very much like the German porcelain that we see behind us. Now, uh, you say, well, the Americans were influenced by the deco designs. And they were, but we didn't actually go to the exposition, the Paris exposition in 1925. Herbert Hoover said, no. <laughs> Of course, he wasn't the president at the time. It was Calvin Coolidge, but Hoover was the Secretary of uh, Commerce. I think it was Commerce. And when invited by the French to go to the exposition, to appear at the exposition of decorative arts, modern decorative arts in, in Paris in 1925, Hoover said, no, we don't have anything modern in this country. So we don't have anything to show. And so no, no one's going to be doing an exhibition so we were not a part of it <laughs> uh, neither was Germany because it was, had was you know too close to the end of the war first war anyway an American delegation did go and brought the ideas back to this country and it made its all the, all it's made its way to the to the breakfast depression table this this would have cost just a few cents that's the Ritz blue color from 19, from the 1930s. Just quickly, a uh, little recipe book here from the new delineator, which I think was a magazine. This is a 1931 uh, recipe book. But look at how, there's nothing terribly deco about that tea kettle boiling, but the steam does not waft its way upward as it would have in the Art Nouveau style. It zigzags in a lightning bolt, if you will, in the Art Deco style. So even the graphics on the front of a 19, a cheap 1930s cookbook is Art Deco. You might have been watching when Vintage Vinny and I were shopping at an antique mall and I found this wonderful McCoy color craft uh, vase, somewhat hard to find, sells for about, oh, at least $200. I've got it sitting on a black glass pedestal. But take a look at the glaze on this. It's really nice. Pardon for the way I'm handling it with one hand. Again, it's going to date to around 1930. It has a production number on the bottom, uh, but not marked McCoy, but that's what it is. It might have had, I believe they, these had paper labels at that time. Uh, so I was really excited to find this. The Japanese were sending us, now you say, that looks like Frank art. It does look like Frank art. And it's not. They are not. The black cat in the back is the first one that I found. And uh, let's move these out of the way. So I only have one here in black. Oh, how well you can see him. Let's do it this way because the light. There we go. So he's very deco. Street, uh, the way he's shaped, his body is shaped. And then we've got two, two more. Now these are just made out of plaster. Let me get the camera where you can see. These are just made out of, uh, as I said, sort of a ceramic type plaster. They were probably designed as bookends, although not very effective as bookends. We can see here, this is the 1930s made in Japan mark on the bottom. And they just have an applied patina. This green color was popular with a lot of the deco uh, art metal works of the day. And I think that's what they're trying to imitate. Frank Art had expensive bookends with this green patina. And I think the Japanese were sort of imitating that with these cats. So we have four, ca three cats. <laughs> the, uh, the nude bookends here, I didn't actually purchase. I grew up with them. <laughs> they were in my parents' house. And when I was a boy growing up, they were in, they were in my father's uh, office 
or well, it was his home office, but we called it a den. Uh, the piano was in there, and that's where I would go and practice the piano when he wasn't in there working. And these were in the house on, on a bookshelf, a great big floor to ceiling bookshelf that was on the back of the office. I don't know where they came from. I imagine my mother didn't want them anywhere else in the house, but they were in his, in his office room. And they are, uh, they are made of metal. They have a patina on them. I have never really even paid much attention to them because they've just always been around and I don't know who the maker was original green felt on the bottom. They're not Frank Art. Ronson, maybe, who knows. One of the metal companies in this country that was, that was making bookends like, that were making bookends like this. So very geometric here at the bottom. And, you know, she's very, she's got her hair bobbed. Okay, so we know that she was, would have been considered a, a flapper, probably. And, uh, I like those a lot and they're in really good condition. We've already talked about the cup of coffee. Uh, this is woo, pride and joy right here. Uh, let me hold her up very carefully and then we'll put her back down. This is uh, this dates to the mid 1930s as well. And uh, this was designed by, si there was a pair of sisters, May and Vivi, uh, Hamilton. They were American-born sisters and uh, did work in, in art pottery and design. They were on their own for quite a while. Let me show you the Hamilton mark on the inside. It just has a target design there and the word Hamilton. And of course, it will not focus for me. Uh, the, May Hamilton is the sister who designed this sculpture, which is entitled Head with Hand. <laughs> Head with Hand. And uh, they went and they worked for Vernon Kilns for a while in California. In the mid-1930s, the Vernon Kilns uh, company opened up an artware department for art, sculptures, vases, and whatnot. And the sisters worked there for... Oh, I want to say 1935 to 37. Anyway, it, it failed. The art department failed. You didn't have a lot of people in the 30s able to spend money on, on art like this. Now, when they worked with Vernon Kilns, it's my understanding that it was only produced in white. You will find these in pink. This is what's called charcoal black. And there may be some other colors as well that are unknown. But this was marked Hamilton, so this is prior to when she, they were with Vernon Kilns. It was not made as a store display. When I found it at the flea market, I paid $50 for it. It's worth about 1000 and it is rare. And when I uh, found it at the flea market, uh, I thought it might have been a store display. This is very similar to the mannequins that you would see in the 1930s, and I thought, well, maybe it was... Uh, on a counter in a store and it held a lipstick in, in this as a display piece, but it's actually just a piece of decorative artwork. Objet d'art, right? Is that what you call it? Now let me stand back up and I want to show you, we'll move her out of the way. Uh, I never knew this. We're going to come back to these things in a minute, but the Cambridge Glass Company, hold on now. Are you still there? I was looking in my Cambridge glass book. Cambridge made a glass head. And here it is in amber glass. Notice the similarities. This is early 1930s, and this is a mannequin head. This was actually produced for commercial use. It doesn't ever appear in any of the uh, catalogs, um, Cambridge catalogs, you know, for home use. But this was, uh, as I said, for department stores and whatnot. If you can find one today, it's, it's going to cost you about four to $5,000 if you can find one. Uh, the mannequin head there made by Cambridge. So it was a popular style to have this elongated giraffe-like neck 
and very stylized hair. Uh, I, this is probably one of the most exciting Art Deco pieces I have because of its because of how rare it is. That just came from the Philly Aids thrift shop about two days ago. A cheap piece of wall art from the 1930s. Again, notice this is the black and the silver, a combination very popular in the Deco era of the 30s. Here we have some type of a, I don't know, is that a Harlequin or something? Uh, playing his lute. Now there were probably two of these, uh, one to hang on the right and one to hang on the left. They would complement each other. We don't know that for sure, but more than likely these often came in pairs and this would have been bought, this could have been bought in a Woolworths or any type of little five and dime store. It's got its original uh, hanging apparatus wire on the back and it's a silver uh, uh, type of a paper. It's just very well done. There's no damage on it. It was very cheap, uh, inexpensive rather for me to buy, but it's a, it's a nice example of what the everyday person could afford in those dark days of the depression. And then finally, we have to have a few kitchen items. Here's a kitchen radio in a popular cream color. Uh, and this is a little Emerson set here, I think, that I already showed you, which I just recently found. And it's uh, sitting next to this wonderful, we have to uh, tip our hats to the American Streamline. And uh, when Deco fell out of fashion in Europe, it was uh, going strong here in the form of this wonderful modern streamline. This is a kitchen appliance, obviously a Hamilton Beach electric mixer with this wonderful mix guide up here. And we can uh, turn the knob and we have all these different settings difficult for you to see with the way the light is. And then finally, you've seen this before, an orb shaped black glass vase that's got a snake plant in it. Let me refocus again. Hold on just a moment. There we go. Uh, you cannot find a photograph of a living room in the 1930s without a doggone snake plant in it. Everybody loved those things. So that's it. I just hope you enjoy this little walk through some of the Art Deco items that I've enjoyed. I often say I don't collect anything, but that's really not true. Uh, examples of this type of design from the 1930s. I could have rambled on longer about these things, but I think 24 minutes and 49 seconds is long enough. What was your favorite item? Did you grow up with anything Art Deco in your household when you were a kid or at your grandparents' house? What did you like the best? Oh my gosh, it's hard for me to say what is my favorite. I kind of guess I like everything. Well, that's all for today, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Oh, wait for the cat.